In the last lecture we had discussion on electric power and we saw what is electric power, how to calculate electric power and how to find if the power is getting delivered or it is getting absorbed in a particular element and in this lecture we are going to revise and implement all the concepts which we developed in the previous lecture with the help of one question and in this question you can see one network is there and in this network there are one two three four five and six elements and we are required to calculate the power of each and every element and we know the power is equal to the product of current and voltage so to calculate power we need current and we need voltage but there is problem in this circuit both current and voltage are not given for any of the circuit element for example in this case voltage is given but we don't know the current passing through the element and in this case current is given but we don't know the voltage across the element similarly in these two cases voltages are there but no current and in these two cases currents are there but no voltages so it is our task to calculate all the missing parameters and then we can easily calculate the power using this formula and to find out whether the element is absorbing the power or delivering the power we will use the rule which we saw in the previous lecture and according to the rule if the current is entering the positive terminal the power is getting absorbed and if the current is leaving the positive terminal the power is getting delivered so let's move on to the calculation of currents first we are having three missing currents and the three missing currents are in this branch in this branch and in this branch we know the current in this branch is equal to 4 ampere current in this branch is equal to 5 ampere and both the currents are entering this node so we will have current equal to 9 ampere in this branch and the direction of this current is from right to left and you can see the current is entering the negative terminal now following the same process that is following the KCL we will calculate the current in this branch 6 ampere is the current in this branch and this 6 ampere current is getting divided and 5 ampere is now flowing in this branch this means remaining 1 ampere will flow in this branch so here also we will have the same 1 ampere current because there is no division in the path and you can see 1 ampere current is entering the node and 9 ampere current is also entering the node this means current in this branch is going to be 1 plus 9 ampere this means 10 ampere so we have calculated the three missing currents and now we will focus on calculation of three missing voltages and for that I will assume that the potential here is equal to zero volt we have connected it to the ground and we know the potential of the ground is equal to zero volt and as potential here is equal to zero volt this means potential here will be zero volt as well and here also the potential will be zero volt all these three points are same you can draw it like this if you want so all these three points you are looking here are the same point and they will have the same potential and now we will move on to a very powerful tool which is known as nodal analysis we will have a detailed discussion on nodal analysis in the coming lectures but now to calculate the missing voltages we will use the nodal analysis we have assumed the potential here is equal to zero volt you can assume some other potential the answer will not change but the calculations will become complicated therefore for the simplicity we have assumed zero volt potential and we know the potential difference the potential difference is equal to the high potential minus the low potential here potential difference is equal to 10 volts 10 volts 
and you can see the positive terminal is connected to this point and the negative terminal is connected to this point this point is having the zero volt and as negative potential is connected to this point this point is the low potential point so in place of low potential we will put zero volt and let's say potential at this point is equal to v1 we don't know the potential at this point so we have assumed potential v1 and v1 is the potential which is higher therefore we will write v1 in place of high potential so v1 minus 0 volt is equal to 10 volts this means v1 is equal to 10 volts so we have calculated potential at this point and if you want to use the shortcut which i gave you to calculate the potential difference you can use it as well so i will quickly show you how to use that shortcut to calculate the potential difference or potential at a point i will consider the same case and i told you to move from any one point let's say you are moving from this point that is the point of zero potential so we will have zero volt then we will move forward and you can see we have encountered with a potential difference so we will write 10 volts and the sign we will have between 0 volt and 10 volt will depend on the next to next terminal and next to next terminal is positive terminal so i will write plus here after this we will equate this with the points potential where we want to stop we want to stop at v1 if you want you can move further but we are interested in calculating v1 so i will stop here and therefore i will equate everything with v1 so from here you are getting v1 equal to 10 volts the same answer so now we have v1 let's move on calculating to the other potentials as well v2 v3 to calculate v2 i will use the shortcut method we will start from v1 we have calculated v1 we will start from v1 then we will move forward and you can see we have encountered with a potential difference which is equal to 2 volts and the sign we will have is equal to the next to next terminals sign so we will have negative sign between v1 and 2 volts and then we will equate it with v2 v1 is equal to 10 volts so we have 10 volts minus 2 volts equal to v2 this implies v2 is equal to 8 volts good and now we will move on to the calculation of v3 and we will follow the same process we will start from v1 then we will move forward and you can see we have encountered with a potential difference equal to 3 volts and we will have positive sign between v1 and 3 volts and then finally we will equate this with v3 v1 is equal to 10 volts so we have 10 volts plus 3 volts and finally we are getting v3 equal to 13 volts so now we have successfully calculated all the missing currents and all the missing voltages now let's begin the calculation of the power of each element one by one and we will start with this element and i will name the power as p subscript 10 volts this is representing that the power we are calculating is for this element and we know the power is equal to the product of current and voltage and in the case of this element the voltage is 10 volts and the current is equal to 10 ampere therefore power will be equal to 10 multiplied to 10 watts and this is equal to 100 watts now what about the sign and the nature of power you can see current is entering the positive terminal therefore sign will be positive and the power will get absorbed or you can say this particular element is acting as the sink and now we will move on to the calculation of power of this element and in this case you can see that current is entering the negative terminal therefore 
the power will have the negative sign and the magnitude of the power will be equal to 9 multiplied to 2 this means 18 watts so finally we are getting the power equal to minus 18 watts for this element and the power is getting delivered and therefore this element is acting as the source now let's move on to this element p subscript 3 volts in this case the current 1 ampere is entering the positive terminal therefore plus sign will be there and the magnitude will be equal to 1 multiplied to 3 therefore 3 watts and the power is getting absorbed and this element is acting as the sink now we will calculate the power of this element and this time the current is equal to 6 ampere and the voltage or potential difference is equal to 13 volts minus 0 volt so first I will write down the magnitude of the power and then we will talk about the sign of the power the magnitude will be equal to 6 multiplied to 13 minus 0 6 multiplied to 13 minus 0 this is current and this is potential difference or the voltage when you solve it you will get 78 watts now what about the sign when you first look at this portion of the network you will find the current is entering the high potential 13 volt is the higher potential as compared to the 0 volt therefore current is entering the positive terminal and therefore you will say the sign will be positive but this is not correct I will explain why this is not correct and for that I will take this as the example and I will draw it little bit bigger this is the positive terminal this is the negative terminal and the current equal to 10 ampere is entering the positive terminal and the same current will leave the negative terminal now we know that when current enters the positive terminal the power is going to be positive but what is actually happening inside the current is entering the negative terminal it is leaving the positive terminal and entering the negative terminal now focus on this case in this case current is entering the positive terminal it is not entering the negative terminal it is entering the positive terminal therefore power will be negative when current enters the negative terminal inside then the power is positive and when current enters the positive terminal inside the power is going to be negative so we have negative power and therefore this element will act as source and the power will get delivered now we will talk about the power of this element in this case v2 is at the higher potential because v2 is equal to 8 volts and this potential is lower because it is equal to 0 volt therefore you can see that current is entering the positive terminal so we have negative sign for the power and the magnitude of the power will be equal to 4 multiplied to v2 minus 0 this means 4 multiplied to 8 and from here we are getting the power equal to minus 32 watts and therefore power is getting delivered and this element is acting as the source now the only element left is this one and let's quickly calculate its power in this case current is entering v2 and v2 is having the potential equal to 8 and v3 is having the potential equal to 13 so the potential difference or the voltage will be equal to 5 and the current is also equal to 5 so 5 multiplied to 5 watt is the magnitude of the power and the sign we will get is plus 
Why plus? Because V3 is the higher potential and V2 is the lower potential. So current is entering the lower potential inside. Therefore, we will have positive sign. This case is same as this case. So finally, we will get the power equal to plus 25 watts. So in this way, we have calculated the power of the every element present in the network. Now we will move on to the next point and according to this point, at any instant of time in a circuit, the algebraic sum of the power is always zero. This means summation P is always equal to zero. This is very important point and we are getting this point from law of conservation of energy. According to the law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Therefore, the sum of absorbed powers minus the sum of delivered powers will always be equal to zero. Or we can say the sum of absorbed powers is equal to the sum of delivered powers. Now try to justify this using this particular question. You only need to find out sum of powers absorbed. You need to select all the cases in which the power is getting absorbed. For example, this case, this case and also this case. Here also the power is getting absorbed and then you need to find out the sum of all the powers which are getting absorbed. Similarly, calculate the sum of all the powers which are getting delivered and then check whether they are equal or not. So this is the homework problem. Let me know in the comment section whether it is satisfied in this question or not. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.